Hi, Shannon Waller here, and welcome to this episode of the Team Success Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about something that can really put a monkey wrench into teamwork, and that is that when we say yes to the wrong things. So what happens here is that we create what we call messes by obligating ourselves without having a real emotional commitment to doing them. So we have a little formula called M equals O minus C, which is a mess is equal to an obligation without a commitment. And we had a fantastic conversation about this in our Strategic Coach Team Leader Program a couple weeks ago. And I really wanted to share this information with you because it is, first of all, it was incredibly fun to come up with a list. And we all of us said, wow, we need to get this out because more people (laughs) could take advantage of it. And here's why not saying no is a challenge. So today we're going to talk about how to say no gracefully to the right things, by the way. And I want to talk about what happens when you don't say no, when you obligate yourself. And we all know this feeling. Just imagine when you're in a situation, someone asks you something, and even though you have this little twinge like, "Mm," because you're caught off guard or don't know how to say no gracefully, or you just don't know what to say, period, you go, sure. And then you have this incredible sinking feeling. You're like, oh, why did I do that? (laughs) <laughs> and it can be to small things. It can be to big things. And you just know you've put yourself in hot water. You're like, uh, you're full of great intentions. Often we do this because we want to please the person that we're talking to, or we simply don't know how to say no. So I want to leave you today with a capability of how to say no well, how to say no gracefully. And sometimes it's going to be a little bit more direct than others, but it will keep you out of hot water. And there are a couple of really important whys for this. Number one is that you won't get yourself in trouble. I know that when I've said yes to certain things for which I either don't have the skill, I don't have the attention span, that happens a lot, I actually don't have the mental energy for it, or I just don't have the interest. In the moment, I'm I'm optimistic, but (laughs) that bubble gets burst really, really quickly. And I'm like, (laughs) how can I get out of this? But I hold commitments for something really important. I don't want to not fulfill my responsibilities. I'm assuming that you're that way too. This is not about how to make excuses, by the way. That's not the message I want to leave you with. So it's really, really important that we say yes to the right things. Colby has this brilliant expression, commit to very little. So committing is a big deal. You are committing your mental energy, you're committing your talents, you're committing your will. So when we have some little bit more discretion, we better serve ourselves. And frankly, we don't set up false expectations. I know when I obligate myself, I pretty much that thing, even though I have good intentions, goes to the bottom of my to-do list. I put it off. I procrastinate, often because I'm either not good at it or it drains me. So it's like, I don't want to be drained right now. I need my energy for something else. (laughs) So that's part of what happens. And then you feel bad for procrastinating. And then the longer it goes, it sort of is simmering over in the corner. And then the heat gets turned up a little because the deadline's approaching. And then it starts to burn. And there's a little fire happening (laughs) on your desk because you haven't done something or in your brain. So that's not a whole lot of fun. And the other reason why it's important to commit to very little and to the right things and to learn how to say no is because it will actually help you be much more strategic to arrange people's talents in the right way. And if you're listening to the Team Success Podcast, you know how essential I think effective teamwork is. And this to me is really about strategy and how you don't obligate yourself to the wrong things because frankly, it sends the wrong message. You end up doing work that you frankly shouldn't be doing and other people are probably better suited. Now, having said that, I know some of what's going through your mind might be, but it just has to get done. And yes, occasionally, but only occasionally, we all have to dive in, roll up our sleeves and execute what I call the brute force method. Sometimes stuff just has to get done. But if that cannot be your default, it is very unhealthy for you and it's very, very unhealthy for your team if that's the only method that you rely on to get things done. Brute force does not take advantage of unique ability. It doesn't take advantage of passion, nor does it really take advantage of skill. So that's a very low level of productivity in my estimation if you just use the brute force method. And that's what some of you are doing when you say yes, (laughs) you obligate yourself. And I want to share another example and just talk to this lovely human being, client, who was actually saying yes to a lot of things because he was afraid of being perceived as someone who had extra advantages because of his circumstances. So he knew he was doing it. He knew he was committing himself to things that frankly he wasn't suited for and making himself this sort of sacrificial lamb. 
but it did not make best use of his talents. And frankly, the team was noticing. They were like, mm, he's not delegating. He's hanging on to things. He's not doing what he's really best at. So it wasn't serving him and it wasn't serving the rest of the team. But it took a couple conversations to make that clear. It's amazing when you talk these things through out loud, just how much clearer it's like, oh, why am I doing that? <laughs> so that's really what I want to do today. All right, so we've talked about obligation and commitment and really the importance of being honest with yourself about why are you committing to things that perhaps you shouldn't be. And I think it's really important that we kind of look at our own reasons and our own motivations. Is it to look good or do you actually want to do good? And there's a very important distinction there. I know that most of the times where I have obligated myself, it's because I want to look good, but I didn't do an internal check as to whether or not I was actually committed to doing good. Was I going to do my best work? Was it going to be something that really made just an over-the-top contribution to? No, I just wanted to look good. Hmm, maybe not the best reason for saying yes to something. All right, so let's talk about some ways to say no gracefully. So what exactly are some of these things that we can say, perhaps to buy ourselves time or perhaps to say no or perhaps to redirect someone in a more productive way? And the number one reason for me to say yes to something is because I was caught off guard. And I just, in the moment, did not have the language. So I want to give you sentences. I want to give you things to say when you are not sure whether or not you should be saying yes to something. Nicole and I had this conversation because she found herself doing this a fair bit. Nicole's my brilliant support partner. And one of the things that I learned, again, someone taught me this, was to say to people, let me get back to you on that. And it just means that you're thinking about it, you're taking it seriously, so you're not blowing them off. That's not the point of this conversation. But you need to think about it a little bit more. Now, you may in fact decide the answer is yes, but in that moment where you feel caught and you're not sure, it's absolutely appropriate to say, let me get back to you on that. And that buys you some time. And then you can either gracefully by email or text or perhaps not a face-to-face -face <laughs> circumstance, you can find a way to say no. Then if you are really busy, and lots of us are, you can say, well, that's an interesting project, but I'm not going to be able to work on that until, and then say the date that's kind of realistic. And I tend to be incredibly optimistic and underestimate how long things take. So I kind of have to add extra time because my life is busy and full, as I'm sure yours is. And then you kind of say, would that still work for you? And often, no. You may have been the quick go-to, eh, could you help me? And sometimes you can, and a lot of times we can't because we have other things on our plate. So I like to let people know, especially if I feel like they're not being terribly strategic about asking me, I'm just sort of a warm body. <laughs> I like to let people know, well, I, maybe, but I'm not available to then. Does that still work in your time frame? They're like, actually, no, I need it tomorrow. I'm like, sorry, I can't help you. And then the next thing you can do is sometimes is volunteer other people. <laughs> <laughs> now, please don't be mean about this, but if you know someone is a better fit or you know someone has some extra time, and this is about being resourceful, is you can say, oh, I can't help you with this, but I think so-and-so might be able to. And then you're still helping, you're still contributing. Along those lines, especially if it is something that you're interested in, you could say, I would, except that I have a prior commitment. And this is very good for time-based things. And I used to feel horrible about saying, no, I can't go to a certain event or I can't do something. But the fact is, I couldn't. And finally, I just had to let it be. It's like, you know what? I would go if I didn't have this other commitment. Now, please, you need to be truthful about this. If you wouldn't, unless you got dragged there, don't say that. But if you have a prior commitment, that's a very valid and appropriate reason for not doing something. Now, another thing that you can say, and this requires you being honest, is you can say, I can't give my best to this and it deserves someone who can. So you're really validating that this project is important to someone, whatever it could be. Again, this is going to be anything from organizing an event to a fundraiser to doing a task for someone to doing a spreadsheet to booking an appointment. These work for anything. But you really want to validate that this thing is, that they're asking is important. But if you know that you can't give your best to it, for whatever reason, it's not in your wheelhouse, then it's appropriate to say that you can't give your best to it. And again, at least in Strategic Coach, we talk about unique ability, which are those things at which you have a passion and skill for, you're a hero to other people, the impact really multiplies amongst lots of different people, is you can say, it's really not my best set of talents and skills. I may not be the best person to do this. Now, I don't like people using unique ability as an excuse. However, sometimes it's true. I know for me that if I ever get involved in anything administrative, it is the worst idea on the planet. It will not happen the way they want it to, guaranteed. I will innovate something they were not expecting <laughs> is what will happen. So I would just say, you know what? 
I know you think I'm the right person, but I'm really not. And I'll tell them why. I know my skills. I know my lack of skills. I'm very clear about what my contribution can be and what it can't be or what it should and shouldn't be. And I'm just very upfront about that. So I don't feel badly saying no to things that, frankly, I would make a mess of. I don't think they'd appreciate me taking it on if I couldn't do a great job. Now, one phenomenal thing that I heard at the workshop, and someone's used this quite effectively, and he gets asked to do a lot of things, particularly around community or charity work. What he tells people is, yes, I love that idea. Could you please send me a summary of exactly what you want me to do? He said, 99 times out of 100, not even 9 times out of 10, they never do because they're not clear. They're kind of bouncing the idea off you. And have you ever found that? People say, hey, we could do this. And you're like, yeah, we could. And they're like, great, thanks for doing it. And you're like, uh, how'd that happen? <laughs> so be very cautious. Be very conscientious about what you actually take on. You know, they're actually using you as a sounding board. And then all of a sudden it ends up on your plate. You're like, uh, how'd that happen? Well, you can say specifically, send me a summary of exactly what you want me to do. And again, because people are rarely that intentional or think it through, that almost never happens. So that puts it back in their ballpark. And it's interesting, the fact that it really comes back to you again. And if it does, then you can actually have a great conversation about it. If it is not in your wheelhouse, if it is not your unique ability, what you can say is, well, I can't help you with that part of it, but I could help you think it through. I love helping people think things through or whatever part of it you could do. If you're a brilliant organizer, then you say, well, I'm not going to actually go and ask people for money, but I could help you organize the event. Whatever contribution you do want to make, then replace it. Replace what they're asking you for with something else. The other one, again, this requires some self-awareness on your part, but you can say, thank you for thinking of me, but I know that I only have so much mental energy for this type of a task and it's already committed to something else. And then say, if it's appropriate, what the other thing is. You need to save it for another project. I know I don't have a lot of organizing energy, but anything I do have, frankly, is around making sure my kids get to school and get home and get fed and get clothed and all those sorts of things. So a lot of my arranging happens for my family. And I just don't have a lot left over. And fortunately, I have fabulous team members who support me on work stuff. But I just know I don't have a lot of that. And whatever I do have, frankly, is already committed elsewhere. And people actually really respect that. They respect that you're conscious about how you commit your talent and your energy and your attention. Now, other people are a little bit less worried about the graceful part. And they're just very happy saying, actually, no. We're not going to do it that way. I'm not going to take that on. That's not a great use of my energy right now. And talking with other people about this, they're like, mm -hmm, I really appreciate when people are direct like that. And I always feel like it's kind of abrupt or that I'm being too something about it, rude. And they're like, no, no, it's just good to know. I just wanted to know yes or no. And you said no. So now I know I can proceed. I'm like, it was that easy? And they're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes it's my own mental issues I have with it. I'm worried about how I'm going to be perceived. And they're actually completely and totally fine with it now, especially if it's kind of a permission type thing. If you're a person of authority who's in charge of making decisions, sometimes the answer is yes and sometimes the answer is no. And that's completely and totally fine. Now, another team member said, oftentimes she would say, I'm, I'm overwhelmed, I need help, or I don't want to do this. And her entrepreneurs would say to her, I understand that you're swamped and we know that you can do it. And this will be a phenomenal learning experience for you. At first she was like, really, do I have to do this? But she said with those things, she's the one who told us this, by the way, she said those things, I have massively greater amounts of capability now as a result of me not getting rid of something. So the entrepreneurs in this case were the ones that said no, because you're going to learn something. And I think this is a really important one, I know, for me to use with my kids. It's like, I could do this for you, but I'm not going to, because you'll learn something out of doing it. And this is how other people become more capable, and our team members become more capable, and we become more capable. It's because someone else didn't rescue us, and they actually said no. <laughs> I had to go and do it. And that was actually a really powerful learning experience. Another thing that you can say if you're really busy, so this needs to be true, use me as a last resort. So I'm not going to say yes outright, but if you're desperate and need me at the last minute, which is a strength of mine, then I could possibly see a way to jump in. So you're not committing yourself. You're not being completely unavailable, but you're also not going, yes. <laughs> so then like, oh, okay, thanks. And they'll often leave you. And then the last thing you can say, and this is really kind of fun, so this is the list we came up with, is that you could say, you know what, I could do it, but it would be an obligation because my heart's not in it. And you say, you know, I'm really tempted because I want to make you happy, but truly, my heart's not in it, so I'm going to say no. 
And even though that can be a little bit hard to say and can be a little bit hard to receive, it is so honest and it's so truthful. It's also very respectful. It's respectful of yourself and of the other person because undoubtedly that project does require someone whose heart's in it. And I know that I don't want people doing things whose hearts are not in what they're doing. I value not only people's capabilities and intellect, but I value their emotional contribution too. When someone is really engaged and cares about something, they lend energy to it. They lend creativity to it. They think about how to do it in ways that are far more creative than what I would do. So I value that and I don't want someone being obligated to me. That feels kind of creepy. I don't like that. So I only want people who are engaged mentally and physically and emotionally with what we're doing. So for me, that's really important. And so I value that for myself. So I don't want to commit to something I'm not emotionally connected with. And I don't want other people doing that for me too. So if someone were to say that to me, I'd be, you know what, thanks for letting me know. This is a passion project. This is something I want people's full engagement on. So if this isn't a fit for you, I really appreciate knowing that. So I think there are just a lot of ways, and I hope these different techniques are useful for you, to really make sure that we are committing our talents and ourselves to the right things, commit to very little, as Kathy Colby says, but also have ways to say no, and gracefully with respect, not only for the other person, but also for yourself. And again, just to kind of reiterate, it is so important, especially in a work environment where teamwork is so critical, where unique ability is so critical, that we are conscious of actually making our full commitments and not just obligating ourselves. Obviously, we have responsibilities. I'm not saying don't do your job. But those alternate things, those other things that kind of come in at the sides, be very conscious and very conscientious of what you can say yes to. And I hope these strategies have given you very graceful and appropriate ways to say no. Thank you very much for listening. I hope this really forwards your own teamwork and your own awareness of how you can make your own best contribution. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear them at questionsastrategiccoach.com. Thank you very much for listening. And as always, here's to your team success. Hi, Shannon here, and thank you very much for listening. If you like what you heard today, please take a moment to rate the Team Success Podcast on iTunes, and we'd love it if you'd share the podcast with anyone else who could benefit. If you're interested in learning more about the Strategic Coach Program for Entrepreneurs, visit us at strategiccoach.com or the Strategic Coach channel on YouTube. For free downloads and more Team Success strategies, visit teamsuccesshandbook.com.